In this series, I'm examining each gun in New Vegas and rating them based on how true to form they are. They aren't quite as bad as the abominations in Fallout 4. Huh, <laughs> mostly. But there's still plenty of mistakes and design flaws, which I'm sure most of y'all have never even noticed. Now since New Vegas has so many damn guns, I'll only be focusing on the rifles, machine guns, and shotguns in this video. Let's go ahead and start with a fan favorite, the surface rifle. Obviously, the surface rifle is based on the AR platform, specifically the M16A1 with a 20 round magazine. The main visual difference is that this one has wood furniture, and by golly, that's quite an aesthetic gun. But after taking a closer look, it's actually really cursed. Out of all of the guns on this list, I am most familiar with the AR platform, so I can point out every single pixel that is out of line. And oh boy, there's a lot of pixels out of line. Firstly, the charging handle is completely wrong. All AR-15 pattern rifles have a unique T-shaped charging handle which rides on top of the bolt and pokes out from the back of the upper receiver. But in Fallout New Vegas, all of the ARs have the charging handle on the right side on the bolt itself. Not only that, but this charging handle is too small to use. You can visibly see that your character can't grab onto it, so they have to resort to using telekinesis. If you were to make the charging handle stick out any further though, then you wouldn't be able to close the dust cover. So it's a terrible redesign either way. Also, as a side note, the dust cover on this one flips upward instead of downward. Even further on the list of mishaps, this gun is just completely missing a mag release, a bolt release, and a fire selector. So you wouldn't be able to shoot or reload this gun at all. They remembered the forward assist at least, but for some reason it magically protrudes backward during a reload as if a ghost is tugging on it. That's literally not even possible. The forward assist only goes forward, hence the name. If it goes backwards like that, then that means it's broken. The forward assist is only ever used if you need to push around forward in the event that it doesn't feed properly. And hey, your character does indeed use it during a jam which is pretty neat. So the developers know what it does, at least somewhat. At this point, it seems like they're just purposely screwing it up because it's funny. But what's especially funny is that this gun operates just like a clown car because it shoots 5.56, but it spits out casings that are the size of 50 BMG. No idea why, considering that every other 5.56 gun in this game uses properly sized casings. It's also a little disappointing that the service rifle is exclusively semi-auto, but I suppose the NCR doesn't want to give their soldiers the opportunity to waste all their ammo. The wood furniture is quite an interesting choice too. In terms of practicality, wood is heavier and less durable than polymer, but in a post-apocalyptic world, producing polymer probably isn't an option. So I think the wood furniture was actually a great choice by the devs because it ties into the lore, and it looks super dope too. The surface rifle does look pretty good from far away. But after taking the rose tinted glasses off, I have to be honest, the developers absolutely butchered it. It's really heartbreaking too, considering that it has potential for a perfect rating. Like if you look at a real life replica, it's an absolute work of art. But as it is in game, the best possible rating I can give it is 2.5 bottle caps. And that's still kind of high considering how many things were wrong with it. I'm just being nice because I like ARs. Now, I suppose it only makes sense to follow up with the other AR pattern rifles in New Vegas. Next is the Assault Carbine, which is based on the CAR-15. It, along with the other ARs in the game, share these same core issues that I already discussed with the service rifle, so I don't need to repeat myself on those parts. When it comes to the Assault Carbine specifically, the main issue is that it's chambered in 5mm instead of 5.56. The uh, 5mm cartridge in Fallout is kind of a uh, convoluted mess. In real life, the only cartridge labeled exactly as 5mm is the 5mm Remington Rimfire, which is just a tad bigger than 22 long rifle. I can't say for sure that the 5mm in Fallout is based on the 5mm Remington because in game it uses a 5.56 sized casing. It does about half the damage of 5.56 though, so I suppose in the lore it is supposed to be smaller. But either way, making the assault carbine use 5mm is just stupid. It makes it into a glorified pea shooter that hits about as hard as a wet napkin. What's even goofier is that this 20 round magazine actually holds 24 rounds. I suppose that does work though since the 5mm round is supposed to be smaller, but there's no consistency. If you use the extended magazine attachment, it brings it to 30 rounds, which is the correct amount. 
if it were 5.56. Five, but if it's in 5mm, then I guess it should be more. And all of that's assuming that this mythical 5mm can be loaded into a 5.56 five, magazine without any issues. I don't know man, it's just weird. Everything would make much more sense if it was simply chambered in 5.56 five, like the real Car 15. The assault carbine does look pretty cool, but that 5mm conversion just ruins it. I give the assault carbine 2 out of 5 bottle caps. Evolving even further, we have the Marksman's Carbine, which is based on the M4 with custom attachments. This one also has some magazine capacity shenanigans. It does have a 30 round magazine, yet it only holds 20 rounds. But don't worry, because the All-American variant holds more, 24 to be exact. So they're both wrong. Not just that, but the magazine itself is completely wrong too. It's far too curved for a standard 5.56 magazine. It looks more like an AK mag than anything. Jeez, first the right-sided charging handle, and now a heavily curved magazine? These damn commies have infected my glorious AR platform. Okay, uh, there are some examples of heavily curved 5.56 magazines, but those are made by Filipinos. And as far as we know, Filipinos don't exist in Fallout. Think about it. Have you ever seen one? Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, the scope on this thing is also completely wrong. From a side view, it looks like a hybrid red dot ACOG sight, but in first person, you'll see that the supposed reflex sight on top is nothing more than a big plastic tumor that serves no purpose, kind of like Kim Kardashian. It's even more disappointing that the ACOG scope doesn't have the iconic chevron reticle either. It looks like every other generic rifle scope. And uh, as a side note, the airborne insignia on the All-American doesn't show up when you equip the weapon. Instead, it shows the texture file used for the gun itself. It's like Gunception. I could have sworn it was a bug, but no, that's just how it is, and I had to install a mod to fix it. It's even more heartbreaking to find out that it's limited to semi-auto fire only. Sheesh. At this point, you might as well make it California compliant. Jokes aside though, it really shouldn't be stuck in semi-auto. The M4 is a select fire gun, and what's especially funny is that unlike the other ARs in the game, this one actually has a fire selector. When you look at it, it's set to the full auto setting. So by all means, it should be in full auto. I suppose the reason why the developers condemned it to be semi-auto only is because they wanted it to be a DMR, hence the uh, marksman part in the name. But in that case, they should have just put an actual marksman's rifle in the game. You know, maybe something like the SR-25? That should have been the marksman rifle, while this could be called the marine carbine. That's actually got a good ring to it too. Anyway, the marksman's carbine was always one of my go-to weapons in New Vegas, and it is very satisfying to use. But due to the excessive amount of blunders, I can't give it to high ridding. I really hate to say it, but the marksman's carbine gets a very mid score of two bottle caps. For the last of the AR brothers, we have the survivalist rifle. This one also has some weird ammunition shenanigans going on. It says it's chambered for 12.7 millimeter, which translates to 50 caliber in freedom units. And if we're talking about a 50 caliber cartridge in an AR, we're most likely talking about 50 Beowulf. But this rifle is not chambered in 50 Beowulf or any rifle cartridge for that matter. The 12.7 millimeter in New Vegas is actually a pistol round. It's also used by the 12.7 SMG and the 12.7 pistol. When using those guns, it's evident that the casings are 50 caliber pistol rounds, but when using the survivalist rifle, it actually spits out 357 Magnum. It's confusing, I know. By all means, this gun should be using 50 Beowulf, but I suppose the developers decided to make it share ammo with those other guns for simplicity's sake. As for the rest of the rifle, it has no other faults besides the ones it shares with the service rifle. Some people may try to point out that the iron sights are messed up, but that's actually intentional. This is a pre-war rifle that has been beaten up and repaired throughout the centuries, so of course it's going to have some wear and tear along with some personalization. It gives the rifle a strong sense of character, and I would definitely like to see more guns in Fallout look like this. The survivalist rifle is an awesome concept. It's easily one of my favorite uniques in New Vegas. However, it's still held back by those issues caused by the service rifle. Plus, the ammo is wrong, so the very most I can give it is 2.5 bottle caps. I really wanted to give all the ARs 5 bottle caps. They do have good style, but I just can't forgive all those big mistakes that they got completely wrong. It really keeps me up at night, and even when I do fall asleep, I wake up in a cold sweat, wondering what could have been. 
Let's continue with the Fallout 4 Assault Rifle. I mean, the New Vegas light machine gun. It's a mutated combination of both the M60 and M249. Huh. It's kind of weird how there's two different machine gun mashups in Fallout that include the M249. At least the one in New Vegas looks better, but it's still kind of cursed. One of the most obvious issues is that the iron sights are completely backwards. The rear sight is the post, while the notch is in the front, which makes for an absolutely terrible sighting system because you can't really see your target. It's even funnier considering that the front sight from the M60 is already there, but somebody decided to weld a big U on top of it for literally no reason. But really, the most disappointing part is that it's not belt fed. It uses a 90 round detachable box magazine instead, and the reload is is very underwhelming. You just grab the magazine, take it out, and shove it back in. It definitely doesn't have the hefty badass feel that a machine gun should have. It seems like the reason this crucial detail was neglected is because the developers didn't want to make custom animations for it. Instead, they just took animations from the riot shotgun and repurposed it for the LMG. Considering that New Vegas was heavily rushed, I can understand that they had to cut corners, and the same goes for plenty of other aspects in the game. But at the end of the day, I'm rating the guns as they are. I give the light machine gun 2 out of 5 bottle caps. It's not awful, just really disappointing, and it would have been much better if they fully committed to making a genuine M60 or an M249, not a goofy looking inbred mishmash. Another machine gun, uh, apparently, is the Bozar, or really, I should call it the Bozo, because this is a goofy odd looking gun. It's not directly based on any real life firearm in particular, but it does take some design elements from the Barrett 50 cal. It also looks like it'd be a bullpup due to the shape of its stock, but it's not. It reminds me of those cursed images of a non bullpupped bullpup rifle. It just looks uncanny. The magazine is extremely odd too. It looks like it would be a quad stack, but since it's so short, it still only holds 30 rounds. Why not just use a standard 30 round magazine then? But the goofiest part about this gun really is that it's supposed to be a sniper machine gun. It's even described as the ultimate refinement of the sniper's art. Like come on, seriously? You'd have to be an absolute madman to use a machine gun as a sniper. Oh, wait. Never mind, it has been done. But it was with a stationary M2 Browning being shot in semi-auto. With the Bozar though, it's forever stuck in full auto. So it seems as if they want you to use it as a fully automatic sniper, which obviously wouldn't work out too well in reality due to recoil. Even in game, most of your shots end up missing because of the spread mechanic. Not only that, but 5.56 really isn't a sniper round. It's best used for close to medium range. At the same time, the 30 round magazine prevents the Bozar from serving the machine gun roll to its full capacity. It makes much more sense to use it as a mid range assault rifle, but even then, it's twice as heavy as an infantry standard assault rifle, so there's no point in using this when you can just use a scoped AR instead. Its role is completely redundant. I can still get down with the design they were going for though, so I don't think it should be tossed out entirely. But instead of it being a sniper machine gun, I think the Bozar would work a whole lot better if it was slimmed down a little bit and made into a bullpup battle rifle, kind of like the Ash-12. That way, it would have a unique and useful role. Overall, the Bozar isn't too bad, it's just having an identity crisis, and it needs to figure out what exactly it wants to be. I give the Bozar Two bottle caps. Rip Bozo. Let's go ahead and move on to the automatic rifle, which is based on the Browning automatic rifle, specifically the A2 model. There are some uh, major differences from its real life counterpart though. The first thing you may notice is that this in-game version has a pistol grip, which the BAR does not have. That's only seen on the Colt monitor and FN Model D. You'll also notice that the ejection port and charging handle are in different positions. The real BAR has the charging handle on the left side, but in game it's on the right side where the ejection port would normally be, and since the charging handle is in that spot, the ejection port has been shifted down a few inches. Another discrepancy is that the BAR is an open bolt gun, but in game it's depicted as a closed bolt gun. A uh, permanently closed bolt gun. Literally, because the bolt never moves when firing. Somebody uh, welded it shut I guess, but it still manages to cycle through sheer force of will. The only other difference is that this version is chambered in 308 instead of 30-06. Overall, the gun looks fine, but they did mess up on some essential details which keep it from being perfect. The automatic rifle gets a score of 3 bottle caps. 
For yet another iconic American rifle, we have the M1 Garand, which is referred to as the battle rifle in game. Just like the automatic rifle, this one is chambered in 308 instead of 30 out 6, but I can't really say that's an issue because it is a common modern day conversion. Really, the only thing wrong with the battle rifle is the reload. It does have the iconic Garand ping but it doesn't have the potential for the infamous Garand thumb. When reloading an M1 Garand, you have to push the clip down into the gun and then quickly take your hand out because the bolt automatically closes after you release pressure off the clip. If you're too slow, then the bolt will smash your thumb, but with New Vegas' battle rifle, the bolt doesn't automatically close after inserting the clip. Your character has to operate the charging handle for it to close. Now this is possible if you use a part of your hand to support the charging handle throughout the reload, but but the animation in-game does not show your character utilizing this technique. I suppose the gun itself is just built different. And you could say that's an upgrade over the original design, since it prevents the user from smashing their thumb. But it's such an integral part to the M1 Garand's character. Taking it away just seems wrong. I also think it's funny how on a partial reload, the clip just magically pops out by itself. Like I mentioned in the previous video though, that's because the game itself lacks a partial reload mechanic. It's just uh, especially jarring to see the consequences of that with the M1. All around though, the battle rifle is alright, and it does look beautiful. I absolutely love the This Machine variant too. Well, This Machine is made for killing commies is such a based line. The battle rifle is very based, so I'll give it 4 out of 5 bottle caps. But the most based gun of them all has to be the anti-material rifle. Yeah, this bad boy is based. Very based. I mean, it's based on the PGM Hecate 2, and it's a near 1 to 1 replica. The only difference really is that this one doesn't have a bipod, but I suppose that wouldn't make a difference anyway because there is no mounting mechanic in this game. For a huge anti-material rifle like this, you would definitely want to be shooting it from a stationary position to maximize your precision. But in game, you can lug it around and quickscope with it like a Call of Duty tryhard. That's uh, definitely not impossible, but you would have to be an absolute unit to do so. Turns out they actually took that into consideration, so it has a strength requirement of 8. Now that is immersive. I'm honestly having a hard time trying to find anything wrong with this gun. I suppose I can mention that the explosive rounds are heavily exaggerated. I hate to burst your bubble, but explosive rounds aren't actually as powerful as IEDs in real life. But I will say, it sure is funny to see Deathclaws fly around when I shoot them, so I won't complain about that. Sometimes the fun factor takes precedent over realism. So in this case, the anti-material rifle gets a perfect score of 5 bottle caps. I really have to applaud the devs for including this gun. It's such an underrated gem with godlike aesthetics. There's no gun we can really follow up with that matches the pure chadness of the AMR, so we might as well cover the most beta gun in the entire game, the Varmint Rifle. It's a 5.56 bolt action with a 5 round magazine, so it's basically the average Californian rifle. The magazine doesn't actually look wide enough to hold 5.56 though, and that's probably because it was originally intended to use 22 long rifle. In that case, they should have just included the Ruger 1022 instead. Now that would have been a pretty fun starter weapon. As for the Varmint rifle, well, it's not based on any real life gun, but I suppose the design looks uh, feasible enough. Besides the hole in the stock, you can't actually fit your hand in there, so it's just useless. And in general, this gun is kind of useless. I can't say there's that much wrong with it, I just don't like it, and I never use it. I'll give it 2.2 uh, bottle caps. It's definitely one of the guns of all time. Now let's get back into the cool stuff with the Cowboy Repeater. It's based on the legendary Winchester Repeater, specifically the 1892 model, chambered in 357 with a shortened magazine tube. Overall, it's a pretty darn good representation, but one fatal flaw is that it ejects 556 casings instead of 357. Honestly, that just makes it completely unusable, and I will be uninstalling the game because of it. Just kidding, of course. It seems like a simple oversight. That's literally the only thing I could find wrong with this gun. So the Cowboy Repeater is very close to perfection. I give it 4.5 bottle caps. There's also a unique variant of the Cowboy Repeater, which is called La Lune Carabine. It sports a much longer barrel, along with a scope so you can snipe with it. It's a pretty cool looking gun, but it does look really goofy in third person because the animation is so sped up. My boy for real looks like he's getting jiggy with it. That's pretty funny actually, but what's truly wrong about this gun is the reload. 
you reload it like a Henry repeater, but that doesn't make any sense because it's based on the Winchester. The regular Campbell repeater does have the correct reload animation, so I honestly don't know how the devs got this one mixed up. I guess they wanted to make it feel more unique, but it just makes me cringe every time I reload this thing. You don't even load in the individual rounds. It looks like your character plays the world's smallest violin and then poof, it's magically reloaded. It also makes a shaky sound too. It almost sounds like you're reloading it with BBs instead of 357. At the very least, it does eject the correct casings unlike the cowboy repeater, but that reload is just unforgivable. I give La Lune Carabine three bottle caps. Staying with the cowboy theme, next is the trail carbine, which is based on the Marlin Model 336, chambered in 44 Magnum. The in-game model is very good, but for some reason, this gun only holds 8 rounds in the tube when it should hold 10. Now that is just not a very good deal. They're really lowballing me on the ammo capacity here. That's uh, the only problem I could find with this gun. Other than that, it's perfect. The trail carbine gets an easy score of 4.44 bottle caps. The brush gun is essentially the same gun as the trail carbine, so it's another model of the Marlin repeater, but this one has a darker finish, a peep sight, and it's chambered in 4570. The medicine stick variant especially looks absolutely immaculate, and my goodness, that sight is clean. This gun is truly a work of art. I don't even care that it costs 20,000 caps. I would sell both my left lung and my left nut to afford this beautiful gun. The only inaccuracy I could find is that it holds two extra rounds in the magazine tube, but besides that, the brush gun is basically perfect. I say it's worthy of 4.5 dash 70 bottle caps. For one more lever action, we have the lever action shotgun, which is based on the iconic Winchester Model 1887, specifically the sawed off version. It's an absolutely magnificent gun, but there are a couple things wrong with it. Instead of these shells ejecting upward, they clip straight through the receiver and eject downward. It also shows a shell still loaded in the magazine even when it's completely empty. But really, the only thing I find truly unforgivable is that it's chambered in 20 gauge, which makes it kind of of useless in the late game. And besides, the real 1887 was only ever chambered for 12 gauge, so it's historically inaccurate too. Literally unplayable. But in all seriousness, it's still a fairly accurate depiction of the 1887. Uh, visually I mean. I give the lever action shotgun a solid uh, 3.5 bottle caps. For yet another Winchester, we have the Model 37, which is simply called the uh, Single Shotgun. Just like the other old western guns, it's a near one-to-one -one replica, uh, besides the fact that it doesn't have a trigger. Whoops, I guess this one's a dud then. But as it turns out, you can still fire it. So that must mean that the courier can telepathically communicate with the gun and tell it to fire. At this point, it is pretty clear that the courier can manipulate firearms with their mind. So actually, I don't see a problem here. It's established canon after all. And don't ask me for a source. My source is that I made it the fuck up. Anyway, the single shotgun is just a single flaw away from perfection. I give it 4.5 bottle caps. But you know what's better than one barrel? That's right. TWO BARRELS! That's where the caravan shotgun comes in. It's based on the Browning 725, and as expected, it's a good in-game replica. I especially like the worn down look. It really makes it feel like it's been through hell for the past few hundred years. The only thing I hate about this gun is that stupid screwed up sight. Like come on, why would you drive a screw into a shotgun to serve as the rear sight? Now I can't see the front sight, you doofus. Literally, unaimable. The only other thing I don't like about this shotgun is that it's forever condemned to use only 20 gauge. Like come on, I know it's an early game weapon, but at least give us a 12 gauge variant to use later on. Overall though, the caravan shotgun is a very accurate representation, besides that stupid screw. So I'll give it 4.5 bottle caps. Let's continue with the hunting shotgun, which is based on the Remington Model 870. I honestly can't find anything wrong with it. The in-game model looks perfect, by uh, 2010 graphical standards at least. I mean, come on, how can you mess up such a classic pump shotty? Oh wait, they did mess it up a little bit, with the animations that is. 
Your character doesn't grip directly onto the forearm, rather, you hold it by the magazine tube. So after every shot, you have to take the time to move your hand onto the forearm and then pump it, but then you just go right back to having your hand off of the forearm. I'm no professional competition shooter, but that's just not very optimal pump shotgun technique. Obviously, it's much more efficient to keep your hand on the forearm at all times, so that you're ready to pump it back instantly. If done right, you can pump that baby pretty damn fast. I am utterly confused on how the developers got this part wrong, considering that the action of pumping your forearm comes naturally to all men. But besides that minor detail, the hunting shotgun is near perfect. It's worthy of 4.5 bottle caps. Now let's take a look at the Bubba version of the hunting shotgun, the riot shotgun. This one is, uh, pretty interesting. The receiver mostly resembles a Remington 870, but the gun as a whole has been heavily modified. Instead of it being a typical tube-fed pump-action shotgun, this one has a chopped-down barrel, a pistol grip with no stock, and it's semi-automatic fed by a detachable drum magazine. I like to call it the ATF's Bane. There aren't any Remington shotguns which are both semi-auto and mag-fed, but I suppose it's still a viable design. Probably. Go ask your local Bubba if they can make one. Really, the only thing wrong with the riot shotgun is that it doesn't have a safety. But that doesn't really matter. Everyone knows that the first rule of gun safety is to have fun. But jokes aside, it should have one. And there should also be a magwell to make loading the magazine easier. It would also be nice if there was an option to add on a stock. So there are a couple things which would make this design better. But overall, the riot shotgun is very based. And it's super fun to use in game. I give the right shotgun 4 out of 5 bottle caps. All around, the ballistic firearms in New Vegas are pretty decent, especially when compared to Fallout 4, but there's still plenty of room for improvement. At this point, you may also be wondering about the heavy guns and energy weapons. Well, I'll be covering those in the next part. And oh boy, that's where things get really wacky.